So hello everybody and welcome to Exapunks. This is a game made by a game developer named Zachtronics. They're kind of known for making coding adjacent games. Lots of logic puzzles that you have to work to uh, optimize in various different metrics. They'll have a histogram showing your stats and all that. Uh, I wanted to create a series just kind of going through the solutions that I had made for my playthrough of the game because this, is, this was a pretty fun game to work through. Uh, this isn't meant to exactly be a guide that's teaching you every aspect of the game. It's meant to more showcase potential solutions for the problems, and maybe you can come up with a better one than what I do. Uh, so, uh, the first actual coding mission you'll get will be this Trash World News. You'll get a set of four of them after Ghast comes to visit you. So I'm just going to go through these first four and kind of just give a, a general description of what you're supposed to do. And I will also preface this series by saying that, like, I learned as I progressed through the game, I learned new tricks. So some of the decisions that I may have made in these early solutions may not be the most optimal, but I decided I wasn't going to go back and re-optimize so that it could maybe showcase some of the growth that I had while I was also playing through the game. All right, so the first job is learning how to explore your network and to not leave any trace behind. So the task of the first one is very simple. We've got our little execution agent right here who starts out as XA. If you want to create a new one, it would be XB, XC, and so on. Uh, and these little guys can hold a little bit of code inside them to tell them, hey, let's execute these kinds of things. And the code starts out very, very simple, and it's going to only get worse as time goes on, but we're going to start easy. So for the first mission, all you have to do is you got to take file 200 here that's in this host called the inbox, and we want to move it over to the outbox. And that's quite simple. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tell our execution agent to move from our home computer here, which is called Rhizome, and we're going to head over to the inbox. And right here, you can see the bridge. And that is our link from one host to the next. And so you'll see if I want to go from the, my Rhizome to the inbox, I have to go across port 800. So that's what the first line does. Go across link 800. Then we want to pick up file 200. That's pretty simple too. Grab and then the name of the file you want to grab or the number associated with it. Now that we've got the file in our hand, we're going to jump. I guess I can actually demonstrate this step by step. So first we'll link 800 then we'll grab 200. Now we need to move over to the outbox. So we once again need to link across port 800 because that's what's on this side to jump across. Then we don't want our execution agent to be holding the file anymore. So he can uh, just drop it. And then that's all of his uh, that's all of his instructions. He can he can delete himself. And that is completing the first mission. Now the important thing about leaving no trace, and this is going to be an objective on most of these jobs, will mean that you cannot have any extra files that you've created lying around, and you cannot have any execution agents left over. They all need to terminate at the end of your program. And so what the game will do is it will repeat the same task a hundred times to make sure that you've got it. And each time that a new case will happen, there might be a difference. Usually it's like some things will just stay the same between each one, but sometimes they'll change the names of files, they'll change the order of things. And so that's something you need to be aware of when coming up with your solutions. So I'm just going to go through the rest of the trash world news because these are like the tutorial jobs. These are the ones that teach you exactly what you're supposed to be doing. So the next one is editing files. So in this one, File 200 has four values in it. We have to add the first two values of it together, multiply that result by the third value, and then subtract the fourth value, and then add the result to the end of the file. And this is an example of one of those ones where each case is going to be different. The numbers in File 200 are going to change between each test case. And if you want to see that, you can actually pick a, a uh, specific test run that you want to see. And if I go from between the test runs, you can see the values under 200 on the left side and file 200 change with each iteration. So you can't just uh, you can't just pick up and like manually do in your head, oh, 72 plus 52 times four minus 60 is this value. And just put that at the end of the file for every single time and, and call it. You actually have to do the process it's telling you to do. So this is this tutorial is meant to instruct you. These are how you do your typical mathematical operations, addition and subtraction and so on. And then also it teaches you how to add things into files. Hello, cat. So 
First thing that we're going to do is just like in the previous one, we're going to link across link 800 and we're going to grab file 200. Now, we need to start manipulating the file and we need to do so in such a way that we are remembering the specific values as we're moving through the file. To do that, we need a, a place that we can store like the value. So like I'll have 72 and then I'll add 52. I need to know what that sum is so that I can then multiply it by four. So in order to store that information, we have what's called a register. And a register is a thing that exists for like microprocessors, for computers themselves at the, at the low level for storing small bits of information. Uh, each execution agent has two registers available to them, X and T. So you can store information in X or T to be later uh, retrieved. There's also a register F. This one is not actually on the execution agent. That refers to the file that it's holding. That is, that is its connection to any, whatever file it happens to be holding at that time. So this third line, copy F to X, is taking the value from the file, the one that's currently highlighted, and saving it into the X register. So when I hit the next step, we should see 72 go into the X register because we are copying that value from F. The first one is the source. The second one is the destination. So F goes into X. The next step, we need to now add 52 to this. So what I can do is uh, use the add I command. This is your addition. Uh, register. There are similar registers for multiplication, sub subtraction, uh, division, and then another one called modulo. I'll probably explain that one more when we actually come across it. Uh, but addition is quite simple. The first two are the two values that you want to add together. So I want to I want to add what's currently in X with what's currently highlighted by F, and then the third one is where you want to save it. So I want to overwrite my value in X with that result. So the end result of this step will be 72 plus 52, which if I do that quickly in my head, that should be 122, should go into the X register. 124. See, I can't do simple math because I'm nervous and in front of a camera. <laughs> 124. That's why we have computers to do the math for me. Okay. Mol, mol I is just like addition, uh, like add I. The first two are the things that you're multiplying together. Now remember, multiplication, the order doesn't matter. And the result is going to end up overwriting what's currently in the X register. So it's going to be 124 times 4. I'm not going to try and do that in my head. I know it'll end in a 6, but that's about all I'm going to do in my head. So we're going to multiply 124 by 4, and the result should go into the X register. 496. Now, the last step, according to the instructions in the bottom, is... Uh, we need to subtract the fourth value, which is 60. So should we, we should end up with 436 in the X register at the end. Uh, now, for subtraction, remember the order does matter. So you subtract the value of the first one, what's in X, by what's in the second one, which is the F, and we're going to save the value into X. So we should end up with 436 in X. And there you go. Now... It wants us to append the result to the end of the file. So for somebody who's not particularly, uh, you know, versed in coding, appending is putting something at the end, add to the end of a list, typically. So we're not replacing anything in the file. We just want to tack that value onto the end of it. So we want 436 to go into the end of the file. You can see we're highlighted at the end of the file. So all we're going to do is we're going to copy X into F and we should end up with 436 at the end of the file. Perfect. The file is complete. We've completed our instructions. Now we need to jump over to the outbox and drop the file, which is going to be just like the first task. Link 800, drop it, and we are done. And we then go, it's going to do the same thing every single time. As you can see, the values are changing between each run. And so you actually have to go through the process but it is going to complete all of the things. Now, there are definitely ways of doing these faster. It, while I was going through this explanation, I had an idea to make this thing go faster. We don't need to worry about optimizing right now. Right now, I just want to explain to you the, the processes and the solutions that I had come up with going through the game. But I saw an opportunity for optimization. I wonder if, if you see it, let me know. See if you see if you can get it to work yourself. All right. I'm going to I'm going through uh, each video will probably be its own job, but for these ones the tutorials I figured I'd do them all in the beginning here. So the third one is learning how to communicate between execution agents. So, in this one I have 
two agents. We have XA and XB. You can see they've got highlights over their names. Uh, you can see they each have a code window here. If I click on one, it'll scroll me over to them. That's not so important here where the code's not very long, but you'll eventually end up with code that goes well past here and you've got a scroll bar right here. Uh, clicking on the agent will highlight exactly to where their code box is. Very helpful. Uh, but let's take a look at the instructions. File 109 contains exactly two values, a keyword and a number. Uh, I will note one thing, strings in this game, like words in this game, you could, they're denoted by an underline. You cannot hard code those anywhere in your code. Like if I try and say copy echo to X, like hard code, like right in the word, copy the word echo into X, it'll yell at you and say, I don't know what echo is. So any of these jobs that requires you to use a, a string value, a word, if I say string, I'm referring to a word. Uh, you'll have to pick that up from a file or from some kind of a register somewhere you cannot hard you cannot put that into your code itself like you can see i'm linking 800 i can say 800 is specifically where i want to go that is allowed but i can't say you know if if a file it doesn't happen in this game but let's say if if i want to check if something is equal to uh echo i can't say is this equal to echo i have to is this equal to whatever register i have echo sort to anyway i'm rambling all right, so what I have to do is each one has a keyword and a number. Create a new file in the outbox and copy the two values, swapping their order so that the number is first. And then when you're done, delete file 199. So XA and XB are both going to, uh, they're both going to do part of this, this job here. This could probably be done with one. Anyway. So XA is going to head over into 800 and then it's going to go into 799 and it's going to grab 199. XB in the meantime is going to link over to the inbox and then to the outbox and then it's going to call this make function which will create a brand new empty file. Uh, and you can see because both of these are starting with link 800 you'll see actually a waiting mechanism where uh, only one execution agent can cross a link at a time and it's going to be randomly chosen which one is going to cross so it could be xa first it could be xb first let's see if i do this you'll see xb got across first that time xb got across that time maybe maybe it's not always hard code maybe it's whoever's last just goes to show that i don't know enough about this game but you'll see that XA ends up waiting because it needs its turn to go across. So what I could do, and maybe this is an optimization that I would let, I'll, I'll actually make, is if I tell XB to make his file beforehand, he'll he'll wait for A to go across without losing any time. He'll end up in the same spot. So that'll actually end up in a in a net positive, because now XB is making a file while XA is taking its turn to cross, and then XB will cross afterward. All right, so now we're here. XA is holding the file that we want, and then XB is holding the file that we want to write, and we want to write things in the opposite order. So what XA is going to do is it's going to grab the word echo and store that locally, because we want that to be the second value that gets written down. Uh, but in order to accomplish this job, uh, we're going to need to make use of the M register, which is probably one of the most complicated. It's probably the most complicated register in the game. The M register is your communication register. It is a way of writing information from one execution agent to another one. When an agent has a value that they want to put out into the M register, it will put it out and it will wait until somebody reads it. If nobody reads it, that agent will stay there forever waiting for somebody to read what they have what they're saying similarly if something is trying to read from the m register it will sit there and it will wait until something is written to the m register so that it can then take it so if you ever ever end up with an infinite loop in uh in these jobs where your agents are just staying there and they're not doing anything they're probably stuck either writing or reading from the m register uh, and there are two modes, there's a global and a local version of the M register. I'll talk about the local version when it comes up, when it comes relevant. For now, just know that there's only one re a global M register and that any agents that are connected to each other, it's shared between them all. So if somebody's writing to it, anybody anywhere else can read from it. 
So what's going to happen is XV is reading from the M register. I'm copying whatever value is in M and I'm trying to put it into the file that I'm currently holding. So he's going to wait until something is in the M register for him to copy. You'll see that XA hasn't put anything in the M register, so B is just going to wait on this step. He's not doing anything. XA has copied the word echo into X. Now he's going to copy the number into the M register. So you'll actually see, they have a little animation in the game. You'll see the value 9780 fly across the M register from XA to XB. And you'll see XB is going to write that in the file that he's holding file 400. Every file, it starts at, like when you create a new file, it always starts at 400 and it'll increase by one for each new file. Whether it's deleted or not, every time you call make, it'll make a new file in sequential order. Okay, uh, so XA is going to send that value over to XB using the M register. So now you'll see I am I am trying to write out 9780 and XB is listening to that. So he's going to take that value and he's put it in there. Now he's waiting for a second value because he's copying M to F a second time. Uh, XA has that value already stored echo in X. So now he's going to put X echo across the M register to XB who reads it, writes it down, and he's done. XB is going to drop the file and he's done. The last step of the job was deleting file 199. That is the wipe command. So XA is going to wipe file 199. XB is going to drop 400 and then they're both going to halt. They have, they have finished their job. And then we repeat it. You'll see that uh, the keywords are different and the numbers are different for each test run. So you can't just like do echo every time. Not that you could, because like I said, strings can't be hard coded, uh, but you can't like do the number. And there you go. And you'll see that one, that one change of moving the make uh, on B cut down one cycle. And I went from being high, probably in the middle of the big bar on the history to being in the slightly smaller bar. Could probably be optimized even more. Hopefully, by the time you're done watching me go through my word salad of all this, you'll be able to do better than me. Okay, time for the last tutorial mission. Uh, do 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 do. Link 800. Uh, maybe I should read the actual job. All right, file 200 contains exactly one number, nine. Well, it's nine in this. It'll be a different number, 62. Yeah, it just gets huge. Uh, so you want to create a new file containing the numbers N through zero in decreasing order. So this should be nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, two, one, zero. I can count. Uh, and then when you're finished, it wants you to delete file 200. We are going to need for this job loops. Uh, looping is repeating a process numerous times until you've either done it a specific number of times or until some kind of a condition has been met saying we are done looping, we can now continue what, what we want to do. Loops are going to be very common in this game, so this is something you're definitely going to want to understand as the, the jobs get more complicated. So, we're going to start out with a very simple set of instructions, things that we already know how to do. We are going to link across 800, we're going to grab 200, and we're going to copy the only value that's in it into the X register. So now we're saving 9. And we're going to delete file 200 because we don't need it. It says when you are finished, delete file 200. The order of that doesn't matter. I can delete file 200 now. That's fine. You see, it checks off. There's that, that part. It doesn't have to be at the end. Now we're going to make our new file. And remember, anytime you create a new file, it's going to start out as 400. There you go. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to start my loop. So the first thing to do is when you want to denote that I'm starting a loop, you say mark and then the name of your loop. The name can be anything you want. Uh, you want you usually want it to be something sensible that you'll understand especially when you you can't i'm calling it loop here because there's only one loop but later problems will have multiple loops inside them you're going to want to have them named as something that makes sense to you if you call them loop and then loop one and loop two which i probably do end up doing because i'm a degenerate uh you probably want to come up with better names but for now loop is perfectly fine for the tutorial we're learning so you mark the beginning of your loop then you have our steps. So let's go through one iteration of the loop. I'm copying the value that is in X into F. So I'm copying 9 into F, which is the file that I'm holding. So you see 9 in there. 
I am then subtracting from x 1 and saving the value into x. So that should then put 8 into x. Now we are going to do a test. Uh, testing is how you check, like, is something equal to something? Is something greater than something? Am I at the end of the file? These are your, these are called conditionals in programming. This is how to make sure that we are, uh, you know, a condition has been met so that we can either do one thing or another thing depending on what it is. And so what I'm doing is it has X become minus one. Because remember, we need to do this until X is zero. We have to write zero and then we need to stop. So let's say I've gone nine, eight, seven, six. I've gone all the way down. I've just written zero and then I run the sub I command. Zero will now become minus one. So I know that when X is minus one, I'm done looping. I don't want to loop anymore. So what I'll do is I'll write a test, x equals minus one. Now, if x is equal to minus one, then t will become one. If x is anything other than minus one, t will stay zero. And in coding, zero means false. Anything other than zero means true. So is x equal to minus one? Currently it's, it's eight, so it is not equal to minus one, which means t will become zero. It'll stay zero. It is still false. Then we take a look at our jump instructions. So in Xabunks, there are three different jump instructions. There's just plain jump, which will always move your execution to whatever mark you've labeled. So F jump loop, or if this was jump loop, it would take us to the mark loop. It would take us to whatever's right after mark loop. Uh, F jump and T jump, however, are conditional. They're based on what is in the T register. So if T is false, then F jump will make it jump. If T is true, then T jump will make it loop. Otherwise, it will not. So right now, uh, because T is still false, we are going to jump back up to loop because we're F jump on loop. So we're going to jump back up to loop. And now we're going to repeat the process again. X is going to be written to F, which is now eight. It's going to subtract one. It's going to test if it's equal to minus one. And since it's not, it's going to jump back. And it's going to keep repeating this all the way down until X is zero. Now X has just been subtracted from zero to be minus one. We write test X equal to minus one. T now becomes one because the test condition is true. One is true, zero is false. So now F jump is not going to jump because T is true, true T is not false. So now we're going to link across 800, we're gonna drop our file and we're done. We can continue and the, and the value is going to change in 200 each time. Uh, it's going to become yeah, I'm stuttering. It's going to become drastically larger, it seems. So definitely can't just manually write like write nine, write eight, write seven, because uh, the values are going to become too large for you to be able to do that uh, specifically. And you can tell that now these test runs are starting to take a little bit longer. I've been I've been rambling for a couple of seconds, and I'm only on test run six. So I can actually hit the fast forward button to make it go a little bit faster. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of it faster. And there you go. So that was the tutorials for Exapunks. I hope it was helpful. Uh, we're going to continue working through the different uh, tasks in this game, mostly just demonstrating my solutions, my thought processes on them, and hopefully you'll learn something interesting and want to give the game a, a try for yourself. So thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to my rambling. And I will see you in the next job. Bye-bye.